got minimal boxes here, but I'll scroll through in just a minute so I can see everybody's bright, shiny faces. Really excited to have you here tonight. We're trying something new, and we wanted an opportunity to meet you and talk to you a little bit about the Presidential Scholars Program, about the Honors Program, and about Interview Weekend so that it can help in your decision in hoping that you'll come join us on April 1st and 2nd and eventually hopefully join us at Florida State. We'll get started with a few introductions. I'm Dr. Craig Filer. I'm the director of the Presidential Scholars Program, as well as one of the associate deans in undergraduate studies here at Florida State. Jeff? Hey, good evening, everyone. My name is Jeff Badger, associate director of the Honors Program, and it's a pleasure to be with all you tonight. Hey, Dana? Hi, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Dana Matthews, and I work in our admissions office. And Sam, would you like to say hi? Sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Samantha Buxbaum. I'm also an admission counselor. Perfect. And I also have one more person that's just going to say hi from the students for the start, and that's Abril Hunter. Hi, everyone. My name is Abril Hunter. I am a third year in the Presidential Scholars Program, and I'm currently the chair of the program. So I just wanted to say welcome, and we're so excited to have you all here. Awesome. So just to give you a little idea of what we're going to do tonight, we're going to cover a lot of information. There's no test at the end, so you don't have to worry about the quiz, but we do want you to ask questions and we'll leave a place for questions uh, about midway through the program after the first part and then leave just a little time for questions at the end, as well as when we do breakout rooms, uh, we'll be here in this room for uh, parents, family members, guardians, anyone else who might have questions for uh, us as administrators for these programs. So uh, we just did the welcome and introductions. We're going to talk a little bit about the scholarships, about the funding that you'll receive as a presidential scholar and as a student here at Florida State. Uh, Jeff will spend a little time talking about the honors program and the honors experience. I'll spend a little bit of time talking about the presidential scholars program very broadly, and then just a little bit of time speaking about interview weekend and what you can expect if you join us on campus on April 1st and 2nd, and then we'll do some breakout rooms so the students that are here get to talk to a couple of scholars for about 25 minutes, ask some questions, hear about their experience, and learn a little bit more about the program from the student perspective. And so I'm going to turn this over to Dana. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so hello again, everyone. And I do see some familiar names in our chat. Um, I think I had the pleasure of talking to some of you during the um, admissions class um, or admissions process. So congratulations on your admission to FSU again. Um, the Presidential Scholars Program, um, not only academically is a fantastic program, but also has a substantial funding component, um, which can really alleviate some of the pressures as far as financial costs that students may face when they are um, attending university and choosing where they want to attend university. And so the program has a total value of $38,000 that's spread out over the course of four years. Um, and for our out-of-state students, um, in addition to that, we will award you an out-of-state tuition waiver, um, which has an approximate value of over $57,000 spread out over the course of four years. Um, with that, we have a $14,000 presidential scholarship, and that's funding that the students can use towards academic expenses, in addition to a $12,000 VRES admission scholarship, um, which is also distributed over four years to go towards some of those academic expenses. And so as we're looking at cost of attendance, that funding can be applied towards things like tuition, housing, fees, anything under that umbrella. In addition to that, we have an, another $12,000 for educational enrichment opportunities. And Craig and Jeff will really kind of dig into what those enrichment opportunities can be, but just a couple examples that are noted there on the screen. Um, research, internships, and any entrepreneurial development opportunities that the students would like to pursue. Um, so that's a wonderful award that we're happy to be able to um, award this you know, fantastic crop of students. Okay, and I will pass it back over to you, Craig. Jeff, my thing is stuck to get to your slide. There you go. Jeff, you're muted. After two years of Zoom, you'd think I'd figure this out by now. Good evening, everyone. Thank you again for coming. I'm going to spend briefly here talking about the Honors Program. Uh, students, you probably know me from the Facebook group. I'm trying to kind of moderate and get all your answers there. And, and you know, students, you'll be seeing various information from me about both Honors and Press Scholars as we move forward. But what I want to talk to you briefly about is Honors, because everyone here starts with us. You start in the Honors Program, and then we interview through the interview weekend for a spot in presidential scholars. And so what is honors? Honors is two programs, actually. It's university honors and honors in the major. What everyone's been admitted to is university honors. And that's what I'm going to spend my time talking about. Honors in the major is our kind of, quote, senior thesis program. 
the big takeaway for my university honor students right now is that you're not required to do a thesis unless you choose to. Um, I strongly recommend it, but it is not required. And then, Craig, your computer still act up there? All right. Getting sassy. One second. This is a good reason for me to get a new laptop, right? There we go. Oh, too many. Too many. Hold on. Give me a second here. You're good. I know what my next slide is. Yeah. So it's all good. Um, so honors, the first thing I always get when I meet prospective students and families is, what are the benefits? why should I be in the honors program at Florida State University? And, and I've just listed on this slide a, a quick handful of different things. Um, and students, when you're in your breakout rooms, this is a good chance to ask the current scholars the benefits because they're honor students as well too. And so they can kind of talk to you about what this is. Um, I'm gonna highlight a couple of things real quick here because the first thing I always get asked about is courses because you all are in high school honors has a different meaning than what it means at Florida State University. And I say this as a former guidance counselor, honors in high school usually means more difficult, more work, faster pace, and all those other kind of fun difficulty level as we have these tiers of difficulty in our high school that, that folks like Dana and Samantha really wanna see when you apply to Florida State University. But when you get here, no one actually wants to talk like that. And so what honors courses actually mean is that we talk about a smaller, more intimate learning environment, learning the exact same stuff, whether you're taking an honors course or the regular course. Examples, biology one, my STEM majors out there, biology one, large public university, generally means that regular biology one will be taught three to 500 of your closest friends. Honors version is capped at 35 students. You have the same learning outcomes. You have the same textbook. The difference is the pedagogical approach of how you reach those outcomes. Think about all the discussion, all of the hands-on learning opportunities that are available to you in our courses. And so that's what happens in an honors course. And we offer these to your general education requirements. We offer them to majors. We offer them to minors. And then there's a slew of honors courses you have no interest in because we accept every major in the, under the sun. And so my music students, you'll get music theory two, three, and four. My not, my everyone else will not have any interest in those courses and it's fine. And that ties nicely into the second point of access to faculty. You will find our faculty are very engaged in student success. And that happens because of these smaller, more intimate environments. You get to know them on a first name basis. To help make differences on our campus, we offer priority registration, which will happen not this summer or fall, but for spring 23. So it'll always be that first spring semester because you got to go through orientation. But after that, you will always register first. You will be able to get the classes you want at the times you want with the professors you want. The catch to it is we expect you to make a difference on this campus. Undergraduate research, leaders and student organizations, community service, entrepreneurial development. We want you to be leaders on this campus in a wide variety of different ways and use the tool prior to registration to get the classes you want to make degree progression, but then also to make those differences across our broader community. Medallion advising just simply refers to the fact that all honor students are assigned an honors advisor. That person sticks with you through your entire four years and it does not matter your major, it doesn't matter how many times you change your major, that person will always be there to help you navigate the larger university. The last, the Honor Student Association, this is our student association you all are part of. That's the $30 dues that everyone's been kind of paying here. They put on uh, events for students, by students. You will find events, you'll find socials, you'll find service opportunities. It's really kind of our co and extracurricular engagement activities that the students put on for themselves. And this complements things that the administrators are putting on, like guest faculty speech, speakers, professional workshops, how they prepare for, uh, graduate school and all these other kind of things that we are doing. The last three things are our special scholar programs that we've got, Honors Medical, Honors Legal, and Son of Honors Business. If you fly for Honors Medical, I've not heard when they are releasing their final decisions. They usually come out either this week or early next week. Um, so just keep an eye out for that, but I know that they're still under review. 
Honors Legal is a partnership with Honors in the College of Law. If you're interested in going to law school, this does lead to direct admittance into our College of Law, though you are not required to attend if you are selected. That application is actually open now. Uh, it will close on March 15th. The catch to it is, is you will not be able to use that as a decision-making point for coming to Florida State because they won't release their decisions until July 1 or so. And the last thing is our Senef Honors Business Program. This is an honors program partnership with us in the College of Business. Basically, they throw the entire weight of the College of Business into a select group of 20 to 25 honors students each year. For my high schoolers, don't worry about this. You need to be here a little bit before you can actually apply to it. But if you are selected, you are in great shape. So Jeff, real quick, we're going to switch and, and Dana's going to display since I'm having technical difficulties. So everyone, watch us vamp. Uh, Dana shares. And we get the next slide up. Boom. Perfect. So when you come to campus, and whether you've been to campus or not, or when you invariably come to visit on interview weekend, you're going to find that the honors program community is basically built around Landis Green. Landis Green is our spiritual home in the center of campus. You will find um, our residence hall is there and honor scholars and fellows. Um, Dana, if you could move to the next slide, please. And so on the east side is what we call the Honor Scholars and Fellows House. And this is a building designed for your success. Uh, we, we have a slogan, four floors for four years. The truth is the first floor follows you your entire time because it's food. Chick-fil-A, Four Rivers, and a convenience store. So it doesn't matter how long you're here, the first floor will always be with you. The second floor is honors. That is where you'll find my office and other administrators, advisors, faculty. We teach a lot of courses. You'll have student hangouts. Uh, we do our, our socials and service and, and some of our workshops in this space. Um, the third floor, I think is on the next slide, Dana. So the third floor, and then we'll come to presidential scholars. The third floor is where you're going to find our sister offices, the Center for Undergraduate Research and Academic Engagement, and the Office of National Fellowships. These are partner offices that, that help kind of enrich your minds. Um, Europe, we'll talk about with presidential scholars, the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program, things like Global Scholars, which is a, a twist on studying abroad with a service-based component. National Fellowships, in which um, Dr. Falar is the director of as well, too. And, and this helps make you all competitive for things like Ful Fulbright's, Truman's, Rhodes, and a host of other things. Cool. And then the last floor, the grad floor, is on the fourth floor. And this is basically our idea of success. We want you to reach the fourth floor, literally or figuratively. Literally, because you decided to go to graduate school here and you've utilized everything on second, third floor, and you made it to the fourth floor because you're a graduate student here. And on the graduate student side, that's where our elite graduate students are. That's where you've got your pie teaching. You've got your graduate fellowships. These are our elite graduate students that intersect on the fourth floor. Figuratively, because you went to a uh, different school or university for graduate school, it may not be as nice of a building as ours is, but they've got something similar there. So you made it at that school. Or figuratively, because you got a job, and we usually define that as having an employment offer at graduation. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of honors in a quick, very kind of dirty nutshell. By all means, I encourage you all to reach out, ask in the Facebook group. If you're in there, if you've got other questions, shoot me an email. If you come by on campus to part of a tour, I meet with prospective students and their families. Happy to talk more about this. But I'm going to turn this back over to Dr. Flora to talk about presidential scholars and what we're kind of here about tonight. Well, thanks, Jeff. And, and also... Again, no quiz, but certainly questions will always be welcome. And don't worry, you come to interview weekend, you'll hear a version of all this again. So it's not the last time you will hear this information, certainly. I'll also add, ironically, uh, Jeff isn't wrong that, that we want you to end sort of metaphorically on the fourth floor, but ironically, you will actually start on the fourth floor. It's the very first place you'll come when you come to interview weekends, because where we're going to have breakfast and where we do the majority of our functions. And we'll talk about interview weekend in just a sec. But first, just to give you an overview of the program. So the Presidential Scholars, it's a community of scholars that's built around classes of 30. We have a class of, right now, uh, 20, 
twos where they're about to graduate, 23, 24, and 25, program of 120, and you all will be part of the class of 26 if you're selected to join the program. We have a specially designed four-year sequence of colloquial coursework where we work together on a lot of things, uh, service learning, leadership development, we have impactful research, we get together and we talk about all kinds of things, we do all kinds of developmental learning uh, in individual classes together across all four classes over the course of any given year. As Jeff mentioned before with the research office, as a first year student, you're guaranteed a spot in the undergraduate research opportunity program. So every scholar that you talk to tonight has done research or is currently doing research through Europe and is a presidential scholar. You are given admission into that program and will have a research experience in your first year on campus. You have the peer mentors, here they are, you're going to meet them shortly, they're here to help make your experience that much better to share what they've learned at their time here at the university to help make them successful, the things that work, the things that haven't, to help connect you to the various uh, opportunities on campus. If you can think of a campus organization or community organization, there's most likely, with 99% of surety, a presidential scholar who is involved there who can help connect you in some meaningful way. And then we also have a very cool shared public service experience that we work on every year and it changes every year. This year currently we're actually working with food insecurity on our own campus in our own community. Every scholar is required to do a certain amount of service work with our food pantry on FSU's campus or with our community food bank here in Leon County. And then we have also done scholarly work and research around food insecurity on college campuses. And in a couple of weeks, they're all going to do some capstone presentations on educational outreach, as well as every small group that's working is going to create a recipe using traditionally found items in a food pantry. And we're going to make a little cookbook, which is really exciting that we're going to have available for our students to use. Next slide, please. Thank you. And so what is that first year's presidential scholar going to be like? Jeff talked a little bit about this for an honor student. And so definitely Landis Hall, we ask that every presidential scholar live on campus, then that every presidential scholar live in Landis Hall so that you all are together for that first year. And it's very important to us that on campus experience that on campus community, we're really here to build community. And so if you are going to be interviewing for presidential scholars, just be aware that if you are selected, we are going to ask that you uh, live in Landis Hall and Jeff knows more about the housing and the housing contracts and the housing timeline, but we just don't want that to surprise anyone. We also ask everyone to come to campus a week early for what we call Leadership Summit. And it's a two day intensive leadership development program that we've done every year since the program started in 2014. And it's the Monday and Tuesday before classes start. And I think that's around the 15th or 16th, I think of this year. Um, and, and so we'll have everybody move in that Sunday before. We have a lot of programming, a lot of peer support around that every Friday. Barring some uh, exceptions, I tend not to do class the Friday before big holidays and that sort of thing, but we'll have salon every Friday afternoon as a first year cohort. We get together, we do leadership development, we talk about the shared service experience, we help develop our own service initiative within a particular class. Uh, we have guest speakers, we do a lot of fun and interesting things, I like to think. And then we also have Scholar Sundays. And once a month, we get together as a full group on a Sunday afternoon, and we have different speakers, activities. We have a student leadership board that creates some. We have a student service board that creates activities for us. And we have a student-led diversity and inclusion board that does activities for us. In fact, our diversity and inclusion board just had a very successful film screening last night. They partnered with our Black Student Union and a Club Down Under, which is our, um, our sort of media conglomerate in the union, and they hosted a screening and a professor Q&A afterwards of The Harder They Fall, which is a movie on Netflix. It was screened in our theater, and it's a movie about Black cowboys and representation of Black cowboys in the American West, and so very excited for those types of programs, all student-led, all student-motivated, all student-run, and, and very, very successful. It's just great to see those partnerships on campus and the great turnout. All right, uh, next slide. All right, so interview weekend. We want to meet you in person on April 1st and 2nd. And you'll be getting a little bit more information about this in the coming weeks, but we do have a full two days of activities. It's not just come for the interview and the interview is it. We have faculty engagement. We want you to meet the president. We have a reception with him in the president's box. We have uh, 
campus tours set up specifically for you. We have really exciting sort of small group environments for you to get to meet some of your fellow candidates as well as some of the current students. There's a lot of things we're going to do with you over the two days because we not only want to get to know you, but we want to show you how you would fit in with us at Florida State at the Honors Program and in Presidential Scholars. That's so important to us. And it's not something that can be done in a quick 20-minute Zoom interview, but something that we really take some time with you over the course of those two days. It's a very exciting two days. It's very action-packed, very exhausting, I think, for you all. It's very exhausting for us, but in the best possible way. And so um, over the course of that weekend, we get to know you. You get to know us so you can make the choice that is going to be best for you once you get the decision for us that you've been invited to presidential scholars that you have been waitlisted for presidential scholars or that you haven't been selected for presidential scholars but you are still uh, welcome and invited to the honors program and we want you to know that regardless of the outcome of the interview weekend the fact that you're here today Pat yourself on the back. So incredible. It was such a large application pool. The number was the highest we have ever had. And we narrowed it down through a very strenuous process to all of you. There's 142 of you. And then we'll interview from that, from whoever shows up to interview weekend for the 30 spots that we have. You should be commended for the work that you've done and for the potential that you're going to bring to campus. And so as you can see here, thanks Dana for doing that, um, you'll get to meet the scholars at interview weekend, as I said, connect with faculty, get to tour everything, participate in conversation activities, and really just get to spend some time with us and get to know us as we spend some time with you and get to know you. All right, let's see, next slide. Awesome, so before we do, where are we on time? Yes, before we do that, let's see, let me open this open here, the chat. Um, should we take just a couple of minutes for questions, you think? Yeah. Um, let's see if you could do them in the chat. So we have a question about travel and lodging expenses covered for interview week. And that's a very good question. If you have concerns that you would not be able to make it because of financial restrictions, please reach out to us. We don't have enough for everybody, but we do have a few hardship. Uh, we do have a little bit of money set aside for hardship. And so that's just something we have to work out with each individual. But certainly feel free to reach out to us about that. It's a very good question. When will you hear if you're selected? That Monday. So uh, April 1, April 2. We send out invitations usually on April 4, no later than April 5, right, Jeff? They'll get it April 4. You got it, April 4. Let's see, we got more in here. Yes, you can do a double major, no problem. We have triple majors, lots of minors. You can get a master's degree, you bet, all that sort of stuff. Um, don't worry about the criteria for the interview. My best example, we talk about that in a little bit more detail, but the most important thing is just come and be yourself. Don't get bowed down in the weeds of that. We want to get to know you. Don't worry about the minutia. Just come and be yourself. That is always the best advice I can give. And I think that's the thing that the other scholars are going to tell you as well. We're looking for some very specific things, but we'll talk about those when you get here. And we'll probably send them out a little bit ahead of time. But um, that's a question for the future. It's a very good one, but just be yourself. That is the most important thing. That's really what we're evaluating is who are you and are you gonna be a good fit for this program? So uh, uh, to jump into some of these, Craig, real quick here, you all will get stuff from me next week about stuff that I need from you to prep for the interview weekend. We provide hotel information. Um, so there's stuff there. Parents, yes, there is a separate parent itinerary. There's some overlap. And then there's your own separate stuff as well, too. There was a question about attendance. And it unfortunately works like this. You've got to be in Tallahassee that weekend yep. to compete for the scholarship. There is no, there is more than just an interview is what I tell yep. folks. So the interview helps make and break our decisions. But Everything that we do there, it's about fit, it's about cohort, it's about community as well, too. And so we need to see how you interact with our scholars, how we interact with other faculty and administrators, how you handle yourself at the president's box. You know, you're not evaluated on this stuff, but it's watched because we want to see how you interact with each other. And we can't necessarily do that in a virtual setting. So you do have to attend, unfortunately. 
Yeah, uh, and actually, it's not an unfortunately. It's it's just matter of fact, and and as I mentioned before, that's why we have the whole two days. It's not as Jeff said, just the interview. It's interview weekend. It's designed very specifically, and it complements the program very well. And I'm sure the students can speak to that a little bit more. Out of necessity, we had to do all of it virtually for the past two years, of course. But there's no logistical way to do a hybrid version of this. Uh, it was something we looked at, but it just, it's either we have to do it all virtual or all in person, and we know it's so much better in person. And so if you are concerned, if you have to make a choice between here and somewhere else, we're here to talk you through that, to help you make the best decision for you and for your family and for your future, absolutely. But we do require attendance. Yeah. Um, real one more quick question, then we're going to move forward. And then these are all good questions and I'll sort of review through them too while while y'all are in your breakout groups and see what's there. There's a question about um, it is a four year program and we do want you here for four years. But again, today is not the time to worry about dual enrollment, IB, AP. We know how to work with that. You are not the first or and will not be the last student who is coming to this program with 20, 30, 50 or 60 credit hours we know what to do with you and so you can bring all the credits you've got we do want you here for the full four years and we know how to help you make the most of that so you leave with a double major a master's all kinds of options there and so so don't worry you're not uh, any work that you've done in high school has not been for <laughs> nothing and so bring all the accelerated credit we know what to do Absolutely. All right. So let's move forward. And like I said, when you go into your breakout rooms, I will scan the questions and we'll do a little wrap up at the end. First, though, I want you to meet the scholars here. We're just going to do this round robin really quick. I'm going to call them out and they're just going to introduce themselves. So you get a sense of who they are, what they're studying, where they're from. And, and uh, so we'll start with that. Um, Abril, you already met. So uh, Abril, you want to go real quick again. Just yeah. Visit. Hi, my name is Abril. I'm a third year environmental science and policy major at BSU. I'm an out-of-state student from Illinois and and I'm super excited to meet you guys. All right, Gracie. Uh, hey guys, I'm Gracie. I'm from Scholars Class at 23. I'm a psychology major and I'm from St. Augustine, Florida. Awesome, Grace. Hi, I'm Grace. I'm a Scholars Class of 22 member. I'm studying classical archaeology and I'm from Sarasota, Florida. Oh, Gabe. Hi everyone, my name is Gabe. I'm Scholars Class 24 from Cantonment, Florida, majoring in interdisciplinary social sciences with a specialization in urban studies. Christelle. Hi everyone, my name is Christelle and I'm a junior studying interdisciplinary medical sciences, currently on the pre-clinical professions track. And I'm originally from Philippines, but I currently live in Tallahassee, Florida. Perfect, thank you, Joseph. Hi everyone, my name is Joseph Kofer. I'm the class of 25. I'm majoring in international affairs. I'm from Ormond Beach, Florida. I would also point out that Joseph and Christelle are both in the HSF building yes. right now. I recognize that, no problem. Uh, thanks, Gabriella. Hey everybody, my name is Gabriella. I'm currently part of the Scholars class of 2022. Um, I'm, a, I'm a biology and psychology major and I'm from Winter Garden, Florida. Beautiful, Ryan. Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Tay. I am part of Preschools class of 25. My major is public health, and I'm also majoring in subocular neuroscience, and I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Perfect. Finn. Hey, I'm Finn. I'm a sophomore studying computer science and English, and I'm from Orlando, Florida. Perfect. Uh, Jonathan. Hey, y'all. I'm Jonathan Marcus. I use he, him, his pronouns. I am in scholars class of 2022, and I'm originally from Huntsville, Alabama, um, and I'm a meteorology major. Thanks, sir. Uh, Sasha. Hi, guys. I'm Sasha. I'm a first year. I'm um, double majoring in hospitality and psych, and I'm from Palm Beach, Florida. Thank you. Uh, Nadia. Hi, I'm Nadia. I use she, her pronouns, class of 25, and I'm an international affairs major from Santa Cruz, California. Thank you, Sean. Hey, everyone. I'm Sean. I'm from Orlando, Florida. I'm studying creative writing, and I'm part of the scholars class of 25. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Jalicia. Hi, everyone. My name is Jalicia. I'm in scholars class of 22. Um, I'm a psychology major, and I'm from Ohio. Perfect. Uh, Alex. What's up, y'all? My name is Alex Chang. I'm in class of 23. I'm a cyber criminology major, and I'm from Glen Ridge, New Jersey. Thank you, sir. Annie? Hey, everybody. My name is Annie Blanchard. I'm in the Scholars class of 2024. I'm double majoring in media communication studies and political science with a minor in Spanish, and I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 
Uh, so my name's John. Hello, my name is John. I'm from Scholars Class of 22. I'm, I'm studying uh, sociology and biology. And I'm from Pembroke Pines, Florida. Awesome. So thanks, everybody. So uh, Dana, do you want to explain how this is going to work since I'm 51 and tech is not my thing? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so in just a moment here, um, we are going to split um, everybody up into breakout rooms. And so everyone is going to be paired um, with our scholars. Um, because we don't have a way, um, there are some limitations to our Zoom technology. Um, for us to differentiate between our parents um, and our students. Um, we're going to assign everyone to a breakout room with one of our students. Feel free to interact with them. And just as Craig and Jeff mentioned, ask them any questions about the Presidential Scholars Program and the Honors Program in general that you have um, in the main room. And so to leave the breakout room, you'll just press that. Um, myself, Samantha, Craig, and Jeff will be here to answer any questions that you guys have. Um, specifically any parent questions that you may have, as well as any admissions-based questions that you have. Um, we can definitely do that within the time that we have. And in regards to admissions-based questions, um, Samantha and I will pass along our direct contact info, um, as well as keep in mind that there will be some more admission-specific events that you guys will be invited to um, if you need to ask some more of those housekeeping type questions. So feel free to you know, really take this time to dive into the honors program and, and what's here for you all. Um, yeah, so just, and and I was going to just say real quick, and I'll go through the questions. There's some good questions. I'll like go through and scan them, and I'll have some answers, some quick answers for the questions that were in the chat for you when we come back to say goodbye. So really talk to the scholars, talk to them about the program, about interview weekend. That's really what we're here for. So enjoy. Yes. So just one brief dramatic pause while we uh, <laughs> finish assigning. Just one more moment here. I can vamp a little bit while we're waiting for one. Let's see. So there was a question about when we end on April 2nd. So we'll send more information out about this, but but the earliest you'd be able to leave is after lunch, but there are interviews after lunch. And so we, you know, again, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. You can totally be in presidential scholars and honors medical scholars or SNF scholars or uh, legal scholars, there's time to do all that. Absolutely, you can do both. Um, we have plenty of all of those in presidential scholars. Um, let's see, you will get to tour. We do uh, tours that are sort of bundled majors at interview weekend. So you will get to have like a STEM tour, a humanities tour, social sciences, those sorts of things. Um, I can't guarantee that you'll meet professors in your specific area of interest, but I can pretty much guarantee you'll meet a student with your area of interest, you can probably connect you with a professor. We'll have a limited number of faculty there, and I cannot guarantee that they will be necessarily your, your potential mentor or potential area of interest, but they, I can guarantee they will be interesting as all get out. And uh, one, one thing about this is you gotta remember from an honors perspective, interdisciplinarity thinking is a big thing for us. Um, that's why it's one of our four key values in honors, and you were actually asked about that on our, our application questions. Um, so I would encourage you all to keep that mindset as well, too, when it comes to meeting faculty that are maybe very different from you or very different research interests. You will learn a lot through this process and it'll be a good thing for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, scholars is the same way. We're all about interdisciplinariness. That's why we, we build cohorts very intentionally. It, it's not all one major, it's all kinds of major all kinds of majors. With the tours, again, unless you know how to be two places at once, we will be doing them simultaneously on interview weekend. And so for the person that asked about the two majors, I would pick the one that you're more interested in touring the facilities of, particularly if you haven't been to campus. And then possibly we can get you at some point, maybe on Saturday around to look at some of the others. Uh, but unfortunately, like there will be an arts tour, but it'll be going on the same time as the STEM tour. So you'd have to pick one over the other uh, just due to time limitations. All right. All right, Danny, ready? Yep, I think we are just about set. So I'm going to start opening up these breakout rooms. Um, and for the people who uh, kind of just late joined, or for those of you that I sent a link um, as the session was going on, we'll get you shuffled in so that way we can kind of evenly spread the love. Yep. All right. Awesome. And we'll pull you back in about five minutes still. So enjoy.
Okay, so that should be just about everyone should have an assignment. Um, please feel free to drop in the chat if you do not have one um, or for our parents who are um, uh, hanging out with us in the main room, please feel free to unmute and ask any questions that you have. Absolutely. If you're a student still here, definitely like let us know so we can put you in a room. But if this is all parents, you all can certainly unmute and we can have a little conversation. Answer any questions for you, best of our ability. Jeff, there was a question in the chat too that I didn't see until I was just, I hate the scroll on the chats here because it doesn't work well. Um, but there was a question that we'll probably need to answer. Somebody asked if they could do honors medical in their second year, which of course, them to camp. Yeah, if that was your son or daughter, honors medical is a high school admission process only. Legal and business are for um, both, well, legals for both high school and returning students, and then business is for returning students. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, what other questions y'all have for us? We'll send out information uh, you said about the hotels. Let's go. Um, there will be activities for parents. We have a separate schedule for parents. It's not quite as structured as it is for the students. We really keep them busy, uh, but we do have a few things for you. We'll have a special panel of students that Jeff will lead. Um, the first year students will give you all a tour of Landis Hall. Uh, we have a special panel of the upper class students as well. And then um, weather permitting, I think the current scholars will also try and do a campus tour for you all on Saturday for anybody, uh, Saturday morning for anybody that would like to do it while the students are interviewing. Um, so nothing quite, as, and, and you all get to come to the President's Box with us. That's a family event. So on Friday night, uh, the President hosts us in the President's Box at the stadium uh, so that he can meet your, your, your child, your son, your daughter, uh, and, and also you. Uh, and so uh, we have a new president and it's his first time doing this too. So he'll, he'll be excited. Uh, we're all excited. And so that's, that's pretty fun. Let's see. Uh, Jeff, anything to add to that? You do more with the parents. Um, I hope you like me because you hang out with me all day. <laughs> Um, there's been a Quisto question in there too, Jeff. Uh, it says, if I get chosen for the Presidential Scholar, can I use that money as well? Yes, of course. Um, yeah, so the, the Benequisto, not to get too much in the weeds, don't worry about it. We've got some Benequistos in there. You're going to be fine. Um, I'll save the how you actually navigate all of that stuff for later, yeah. but Dan and I stay on top of that. There's answers. Yes. Yeah. And we'll have a Benequisto session um, kind of similar to this one in uh, the coming weeks. I believe that's going to be next week on March 2nd. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about there, that there as well. There's a, this is a student question, but for parents, this might be helpful. There's a the question there. Are there opportunities to get involved with regular campus life as well? I like to think we are regular campus life, but I get the tenor of the question is absolutely. Um, and you can assure, assure your child, um, your family member that we have students and scholars and honors that are involved in everything you name it and we've got somebody there they're like a little mole so we can like connect them to something but you know we we they they do pretty much everything and and we've had students navigate marching chiefs or shorter recruitment with leadership summit as well too because there's overlap that week before fall classes all this stuff gets navigated and and, and students craig is 100 correct Press Scholars is one piece. Honors is one piece to their experience at Florida State University. Mm -hmm. But we encourage them to find those other pieces that are meaningful to them across campus, because that's ultimately putting all of those things together is, is what helps determine both student success and overall satisfaction at attending Florida State. Yeah. Um, Dana, there is a question about how the scholarship works with Bright Futures. Yeah, so the blanket um, thing with any type of admissions um, or kind of scholarship uh, awarded by the university is that they can absolutely be stacked with Bright Futures. Um, if you have any more specific questions about that, you're definitely welcome to connect with um, myself or the financial aid office, um, but there's normally no problem to combine those scholarships. Yeah, there's also a question about it's, it's for a film student, but there's a question about how the coursework works. The first thing is the good news is all of our scholars coursework is zero credit hour. So there is no cost associated with it, nor is there any sort of penalty towards graduation with it. And that's a decision we made sort of as we were constructing these because we realized like credit is not an issue for most of the problem, most of the students in this program. The time commitment is such that we have had, we've had majors in every every major at this point. And so I've had film students, I've had dance students, I've had theater students, I have theater student right now, I have music students, uh, so many music students. And so like this 
program will work with any major. I've never found one that we can't figure it out. The biggest, um, the biggest sort of off time is this Friday afternoons, which is just in the first year. There are times where the students will have to miss and we work with them on makeups. It's just about them communicating. It's about them sort of learning how to advocate for themselves and making sure that they're communicating what's going on. But it, it, it's not a problem. We know how to work with the advisors. We know how to work with the dean's offices. They know who presidential scholars are. They work with us on this because they enjoy having presidential scholars in their majors. And so with the film student particularly, yes, it does get challenging as they move into upper, upper years. However, we're only asking for one Sunday afternoon a month. And so we work with them on that. And so once they move into second year, uh, second year, third year, and fourth year, it's once a month. We meet with them basically from three o'clock to 630 on Sunday, about every three to four weeks, basically. I mean, the other thing to remember is that Craig and, and presidential scholars and then honors with myself and my boss, Dr. Schwabe. Some of this is just greasing wheels behind the scenes. Some of this is just, we've done this for many years now and, and folks know a presidential scholar. They know the caliber of student that is a presidential scholar and all this stuff works itself out. Um, so if you are in any of those kind of fine art type programs where it is heavy credit hour, though you could argue STEM is the same way on the opposite side of the house. Yep. All this stuff gets navigated just fine. Um, mm -hmm. The students the students will excel and be and just kind of blow your mind. And, and if you're able to come on campus for interview weekend, and, and that's where we encourage parents to come. If you come, you will see this when you meet our current scholars. They will blow your mind at, at the capabilities. And that's your son or daughter. They were in that same seat a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, or four years ago, and you'll be able to see where they get to. Yep. It's amazing. I, and, and I say this, your, your child for being here, kudos to you. I know they put in all the work, but you all are the ones that create the environment that allows them to thrive. And that's why they're here. And we're going to pick up that baton and we're going to blow your mind with how much they're able to accomplish over the four years that they're here. That's really our job to make them find their space. My big thing is whatever they think their goal is, it's not big enough yet. And it's our job to really help massage and, and encourage and get them to really deconstruct and reconstruct and figure out what is it they really want to do. They might be like, well, I want to go to med school. I'm like, well, that's kind of nondescript we'll dig in and help them figure out what that is or go to law school or, or, or get my film degree and, and sort of really get to know who they are so that they can really reinvest in new creative and innovative ways, not just in their major, but in their community, both on campus and in the Tallahassee community and beyond. We have students that have gone on to almost, you name a school and we've got a kid that was in Presidential Scholars there. Uh, you name a school, we've got honors students there too, you know, and so they're gonna be in a wonderful, environment for them to really spread their wings and realize they can spread them a little bit more in a way that they never really realized. And also there was a question about uh, can, do the BS and the BFA advisors work together? All the advisors are on a shared listserv. It's not really our world, but but we do know that they share a listserv and they all basically know one another. Uh, when you have two majors, the student will have to pick a primary major and that's their primary dean's office. And then that office will work with the secondary major. Uh, Jeff knows a little bit more about that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, and this is one that in double major scenarios, that is the prime real estate that your honors advisor for your son or daughter is going to sit in. We will navigate those type of, of tricky questions because you're right. If, if you're a dance major, major who wants to be pre-med um, and, you know, I've done music and meteorology before it's not an easy double to do these type of things but they're definitely Impossible. doable but i guarantee you 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 the dance advisor is not going to know the first thing about pre-med advising and the pre-med advisor is going to have zero idea of how a dance schedule lays out that is the quintessential spot of where honor sits is in that nexus between helping you all navigate those things yeah and, and we're also, I'm, I'm here for this too, is, is to help to make sure they're talking to the right people, that they're, they're not getting, um, 
not that they get the runaround, but sometimes they think they're getting the runaround because they don't know how to interpret information that's given to them because sometimes it gets a little like registrar speak. And so we help them sort of decode what's going on, help them get in touch with the right people so that they are able to focus on what we want them here, which is focusing on their work, focusing on growing as a scholar, as a leader, as a servant, as an artist, whatever it is they're having to be doing. So um I'm assuming with the research opportunities and dissemination, I'm assuming you're talking about publication and presentation. Uh, your op students all present. There is a huge research symposium at the end of every spring. And so every your op student, there's basically three components. There is a one year bi-weekly seminar that is led by an upperclassman who is doing research in their field or a related field that they go through. They learn all about research criteria, methodologies, presentations, all kinds of things like that. They also are given a sort of database of research experiences. So they're all guaranteed a research experience over the first year. And then it culminates with a presentation and for some of them, even with a publication. So um, there was a question about elaborating on AP and dual enrollment, but whoever asked that, could you clarify that a little bit? Certainly unmute yourself and, and maybe give us, um, I think Carla, it might've been you. Yeah, yeah Amanda sorry. said she'd be happy to step in to, oh, sorry, Carla, <laughs> um, to answer that question from the admissions perspective as well. Um, yeah, I know you just said we kind of talk about that later, so I just wanted to see if you could just elaborate kind of how that works, since it is a four-year program, but a lot of the kids do come in with their AP credits or their dual enrollment credits. All, sure. Let's say all of them, honestly. Yeah, all, it is, it's AP, IBA, dual enrollment, this is this is what our students do. And, and a lot of students means that myself will sit down and figure out, okay, you can only keep 45 of these test credits. How do we cut some of these things, which is a necessary <laughs> process because of, I think it's state requirements, not an FSU yeah, well, thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we'll work with them in that scenario. But in reality, we've got a great program at Florida State called More and Four. And this is where, yeah, it's a four-year program, but let's talk about how you do more in four. Let's look at some of our combined pathway graduate and, and bachelor's degrees. And so you leave in four years with a master's degree um, in something that is meaningful to you. Let's talk about where a second major or a dual degree fits into your, your career progression, depending on where you want to go and where you're starting. Um, a lot of this is very case by case, but you know, this is just the nature of the beast when we're dealing with high achieving students and especially in today's society of a push for accelerated credit. Um, we work with it. We know how to do it. Absolutely. Our daughter will be just fine. And, and it's the kind of thing where, you know, there are exceptions. I, I can think of the years that we've been doing this had one student graduate a year early and really good reasons for it. But for the most part, they want to stay. They want to figure out how to stay at the very least three and a half years. They want to have the full, full college experience once they get here and they realize what that entails because they realize there are so many things to do. They have that $12,000 of enrichment money. And so it's the kind of thing where they may decide, hey, well, I can. So let me go spend a semester in Valencia at the study center that FSU has there or find some other international experience that they may not have or go to DC and take an internship in a senator's office that's not paid. But because we have the enrichment money, they can spend the fall of their junior year in DC doing an internship that they wouldn't have the ability to do without the funding from presidential scholars. And so it's about, again, dreaming bigger, thinking beyond the confines of curriculum. This is not a cookie cutter program. Every one of your students will have a different situation, a different circumstance. And it's our job to help them figure out what is going to be best for them so that they literally make the most out of the time that they have here. There's some pretty standard like approaches that we take, but it is case by case. And every scholar meets with me uh, pretty much once a year, if not more, uh, so that we can sort of check in, see how things are going. And that's in addition to the meeting that they would have with Jeff or Katie in the honors office, and in addition to the support that they get sort of with the nuts and bolts in their major from an advisor that's helping them making sure their curriculum stays on track. And on top of that, we have a graduation specialist office that helps us with these high achieving students that work with programs like More and Four so that we can, again, like, let's figure out how to make the most out of this, get you out of here with multiple degrees because we're, we're, there's a lot of money on the table. And so let's use it. Let's use it really impactfully and very thoughtfully. Yeah. And, and to that last point, Dana, feel free to correct me if I put my foot in my mouth, but like the presidential scholarship can be used to graduate tuition. And I'm pretty sure the Vera scholarship applies as well too. Um, it's just working with Dana um, to make sure that, that it works within a eight term um, distribution pattern. 
Yeah. yeah. So with those scholarships, um, we definitely know that our students are coming in, especially, you know, as we noted before, the, the applicant pool and the talent of the students is just going up. And so we realized that, you know, a four year timeline at the undergraduate level, um, coursework wise may not be where they're at. Um, but socially, the students may want to stay here for four years and get that experience, but move on to their next steps academically. Um, and so the, the university's kind of been um, definitely in favor of us, um, allowing students to petition for that funding to move on to the graduate level. Um, it's not a blanket, yes, which is why I do have to kind of preface that there is a petition process. Um, but I would say a good 98% of students who have made the request over the past about year or so that we've been doing it have gotten the approval. Um, so if it's something that they want to do and something that they're pursuing and want to continue academically at FSU, um, our office is definitely in full support of that and to help in the financial piece where we can. Yeah. Um, quick to the, the question again, and, and Steve, I, Stephen, I would really encourage you to reach out to us. This is a, it's a much longer conversation about the BFA and the BS, but bottom line with the, the base of your question is how do you declare a double major? And you cannot declare a double major until you reach upper division status for the university. It doesn't mean students can't be working towards a double major. And so if, if a student is in a BFA program, but is also doing pre-med, they can still start with biology and take biology with the intention of getting average. You cannot officially declare your upper major until you are an upper division student and have been formally admitted into upper division in your first major. Jeff, I'm saying that right, right? Yeah, no, you're right. There, it's, it's it's like 52 credits, two English and two math as part of the gen ed requirement, liberal studies, we officially call it, but for you all, it's gen ed requirements. Um, so there are formal things that you have to do before you can officially declare it, but Craig's 100% correct. The, the, there, that doesn't mean that you can't still be working towards that second degree um, in this. And, and, and Steve, I know I messaged you privately about a couple of things as well, too. I can help with this. I just need to kind of see the big picture. So what type of accelerated credit are we looking at? Um, are we formal about doing the second major in biology or are we just trying to knock out the pre-med requirements? Because those are two separate things and they can change the calculus as far as degree progression in four years and what this looks like. And so that's where if you've got stuff like this, I know my email is already a mess from admissions last week, but reach out, encourage your son or daughter to reach out, you yourself reach out. Um, it's just jbadger at fsu.edu. I'll drop in the chat. Um, that's just part of my job from a recruitment standpoint for honors is helping you all see how the academics also fit in along with all of the other benefits that we do. Absolutely. So um, I'm just to let you all know, I'm pulling the students back in about one minute. So uh, any last, let's see, let's see here. Any last questions? For for the students, hopefully this was helpful. And remember, hopefully we'll get to see you all in person as well in April, and we'll be able to revisit these questions. You'll probably have more questions. We'll have uh, you'll probably have better information for the questions you have today, and then those will lead to follow up questions. In my experience, and, and certainly we'll be able to happy to, happy to answer them to the best of our ability there. And and really the 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 most important thing for me, and I'll let Jeff and Dana sort of add their two cents too, is, is really for you to understand like we are invested in your students' success. As honor students, as presidential scholars, as finalists for presidential scholars, you all are hopefully going to get a sense of like what we're all about, come to campus, and, and really how we invest in your students so that they can really, again, I would use this term soar here at the university. And they will stumble, they will, because when you dream big, you, you jump big, you stumble, and we know how to help them through that too. Students like this don't like the F word, uh, the failure word, and we coach them through that too. Granted, for them, failure means B minus, and, and so, you know, it's, it's also putting things in perspective for them, but it's really about us helping and, and supporting your students as they really tap into that potential that they have to succeed here. Uh, Jeff? I mean, yeah, you, you summed it up. This is, I, some of my favorite stuff is working with with all of these students in honors because you all, they're all so so talented and and watching them dream big and, and get there and and it's just an incredible process for mine and so yeah to to reemphasize what craig said i i really hope um that i get a chance to meet you april 1st and 2nd here in tallahassee if you are coming through a visitor center tour 
Um, I'm always open to meeting prospective students and families. Just send me an email with what your tour information is and we can figure out whether before or after works and we can show off HSF and talk more about honors or press scholars interview weekend or whatever you want to be. But otherwise, you know, hopefully I get to see you all in Tallahassee in five, six weeks. Awesome. And, and if I'm around, I'm right upstairs, pop in and say hi. I'm going to bring the, I'm going to bring the kids back if I could. Uh, Dana, any last words while I close the rooms and bring them back? Nope, we can bring them on back in. Um, I'll Perfect. just kind of note, like we mentioned earlier, um, we are um, going to have some additional events as far as some of the next steps, housekeeping things that are going to kind of come along with admission to Florida State. So keep an eye out on those emails and take it one step at a time. There's a lot of information being thrown at you guys. Um, so take some time to digest it. Um, Samantha and I will go ahead and put our contact information in our chat feature as well. Um, so if you guys have any questions in uh, that portion of things, please feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to walk you through um, any questions that you may have. Awesome, awesome. I think that's everybody. Thankfully, my computer is doing this today. Uh, wait, no, one more room waiting for it to come back. Should, 10 seconds, everyone. How was that? Thumbs upy? Good, get some thumbs up, some claps there. You enjoy talking with them. I know I know the current scholars enjoy talking with you. This is a, one of our favorite things to do. And I'm, I'm sorry, I enjoy talking to your parents and your families, uh, but I'm really looking forward to get to talk to you all a little bit more in about a month or so. So I think that's everybody. So thanks for coming tonight. Really, I, I just am so excited that you all took some time to join us this evening. This is something new and we hope it was useful and, and informative and most of all exciting and got you excited about coming to campus. Reach out to Dana or to Jeff or to me if you have questions and we'll sort of parse them out where they need to go. Uh, Jeff, when will you be sending out? Probably, so I was gonna make sure everyone got this make probably look for something for me early next week 28th first somewhere in there um we'll start gathering in like i said earlier we'll start gathering information that we need to prepare for interview weekend it'll ask about how you plan on getting to tallahassee where you may want to stay i'll send in that email a a attachment of various hotels in the area that we recommend folks stay at you're obviously welcome to do whatever you want to do, but these are just ones that when we've done recruitment trips um, for faculty candidates or hires or things like that, these are where we tend to recommend folks stay. Um, the big thing though is because it comes out as kind of a mass email is that you need to make sure that my email gets through and not end up in your junk and spam. So I'm dropping it again in the chat. Please add my FSU email to your OK sender because otherwise you may miss important stuff. And if you miss it, you got to be there. And so we will work with you, but you got to be there. So make sure that my emails come through um, and we'll go forward from there. Absolutely. And as Dana mentioned, I think as you all were coming in, there's more events that they'll have and, and, and they communicate so well with all of you. Dana, anything you'd like to add? I hope you put there. Perfect. Yeah, thanks, Samantha. Sweet. Yes, Samantha has dropped um, the website to uh, the FSU 26 webpage. Um, I will just kind of echo um, that this is going to be our bread and butter for the admissions process. So that's always a great place to start. Yeah. Awesome. And then there were just a couple quick things from earlier questions. People, there, there was a great question I did want to touch on that was, you know, is there the ability to engage in regular campus life? while being a president of scholarship honor student? And hopefully after talking to the students, you realize, yes, I'll reiterate, our, our students do pretty much everything on campus. And so we want you to come here, tap into the potential that we see in you. And as I told your parents and your families, want you to realize that whatever the dream you have right now is, as far as I'm concerned, it's not big enough. It's not big enough. You will hear me say this again, and it's our job, the other scholars, Jeff, me, Dana, the other folks that are here support you, the faculty, to help you figure out how to make that dream bigger so that by the time you graduate, you're amazed at not only how far you've come, but what you still have yet to do. We're so excited to meet you all in April. I really hope to see you all in person. Thank you so much for being here tonight. And if I could just in, uh, ask my, my current students, hang back real quick. I just want to check in with you all. But for all the families, all the candidates, thank you so much for being here. Hopefully we'll see you in about a month. And certainly don't, don't hesitate to reach out via email.
There we go. Have a good night. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Great to see you. And any of the current scholars that can hang for like five minutes, I'd appreciate it. Evelyn, if you're still on, send me an email, but we can work. I can tell you how that works offline. Thank you. Hey, everybody, do we have any of the candidates? Oh, got a few to wait for everybody to sign out. Do, 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 do. Uh, Sasha, you haven't like been around me when I just sort of randomly singing enough yet. So yeah, it's fine. You don't 